you know how many times in my life I called for God and waited for him to come and rescue me? And it didn't happen. I wanted God to show up in the saddest, darkest, most difficult times of my life. I wanted God to open seas for me, to bring me out of slavery when I felt enslaved. But it didn't happen. Why? Was I, are we unworthy of miracles? Do miracles still happen? Are you still there, God? I want to tell you a story. There was once a group of rabbis discussing laws about purity and impurity of an oven. The topic of a discussion is less important than the fact that they really cared about this discussion. A lot. One of the rabbis was Rabbi Eliezer, who was a very wise man and knew all the laws. He was always right. But the other rabbis did not agree with him. And Rabbi Eliezer was getting very frustrated. Have you ever been in that place where you know that you're right and nobody else <laughs> believes you? <laughs> it's very frustrating. So Rabbi Eliezer decides that he's going to prove to all of the other rabbis that he's right. And he says, if I'm right, this tree is going to move. And guess what? The tree moved. Pretty amazing, right? You would think that by now, all of the other rabbis are going to say, yes, Rabbi Eliezer is right. But interestingly enough, they don't. They continue the conversation. Rabbi Eliezer now gets even more frustrated than he was before. And he says, I am so right that these waters are going to flow backwards. And they do. And he continues, I'm so right that the walls in this room are going to cave in. And they do. But the rabbis are still not convinced. And they continue the conversation and say to Rabbi Eliezer, wait, that's not how it works. Now, Rabbi Eliezer has one last card to play. He calls on God himself to come down and tell everyone else that he, Rabbi Eliezer, is right. And so we hear a bat kol, a voice from heaven, coming down and saying, Malachem etzel be Rabbi Eliezer, shechalacha kemoto bekol makom. What's your problem with Rabbi Eliezer? The law is like him in every instance. To which one of the rabbis looks up and says to God, Hey God, remember when you gave us the Torah? You told us that it was not in heaven anymore that it was now in our hands, that we needed to study it, to find ourselves in it, to find answers in it, to find you, God, in the text. We're doing just what you told us to do. There are many lessons to be learned from this story, but I think one of them is that there had been a shift in how we related to God. It would not be about calling for God and asking him to make miracles for us. We would now have to find God not in the loud miracles, but in the quiet ones, in the details of our lives, in relationships, in opportunities to engage that God allows us to have. Does that mean that it was a weaker relationship with God? I don't think so but I certainly think that it is a much more mature relationship. As I was thinking about this process, an analogy came to my mind. Think of when you were a baby. When you opened your eyes, most likely the first thing you would see was your parents' face right in front of you. You would see that face when you woke up, when you were being fed, when you were being changed, when you were put in bed. That parent was there in front of you every single minute of your day. But as you became a toddler and started taking your first steps, where was the parent? Not in front of you, but at your side, holding your hand. You could feel the warmth of your parent's hand in yours, 
But if you wanted to see the parent, you would actually have to look to the side. And then you started learning how to run. How much fun was that to be able to run away from your parents? <laughs> they weren't in front of you. They weren't next to you. But they were behind you, ready to jump in and pick you up if you needed any help. And then you became a teenager. And the last thing you wanted in your life was to see a parent <laughs> in front of you, next to you, or behind you. But they were there, ready for you whenever you were willing to have a relationship with them. As you became an adult, however, things changed once again. Most likely, you're not living in the same house as your parents. For some of us who are blessed, our parents can still be reached over a phone call. For others, our parents are not in this world anymore. You can't see them. You can't talk to them. But does that mean that relationship has been weakened? Not at all. What it means is that if I want to connect to that parent, I have to look inside myself. I have to be able to access the teachings that they gave us. I have to be able to look deep inside myself and feel that connection that will never be severed. I think that is what happens between God and us. God is still around, but we will need to find that connection. We will need to actively look for miracles. You see, Rabbi Eliezer was always right. We know that. But he still wanted a relationship with God that relied on loud miracles. Rabbi Eliezer heard God, saw God in trees that moved and in war water currents that changed direction. That was not going to happen anymore. God was no longer going to be like that parent that jumps in to pick us up and take us out of our troubles. We are now adults. And if we want to see miracles, we are going to actively have to search for them in order to access them. Thankfully, one of Rabbi Eliezer's students, Rabbi Akiva, who inspired so many and still inspires us, offered us a different model. Miracles are to be found everywhere, even in the crown of a letter of a word in a Torah scroll. Miracles are in the details of our lives, in the relationships we have, in the opportunities to engage that God puts in front of us. A miracle today is a spark of connection between me and God. It may not be loud. Hollywood is certainly not interested in it. <laughs> but it's there. God makes his presence known to me. The Baal Shem Tov said that the world is full of miracles, but man takes his little hand, covers his eyes, and sees nothing. Judaism calls upon us to remove our hands from our eyes and to pay attention to the world around us. Tangibly perceiving that each little thing is a chance to strengthen our connection with God. If I choose to do so, every day I can recognize a powerful, personal, accessible, miraculous force in my life. I can find connection. I can find wonder. I can find something that is so much bigger than myself. We are given an opportunity to see miracles everywhere we look. We don't have to wait for God to come down amidst thunder and lightning to believe that miracles exist. We can find them every day, many times a day. Go outside. Look at a sunrise or a sunset. Look at a flower blooming in your backyard. Listen to your breath rushing with excitement and quieting down with contentment. Think of a medical breakthrough or recovery 
a technological advance that changes lives, a birth of a child. We are given a choice. We can go through life without ever noticing a miracle, or we can choose to actively look and find miracles. Realize the miracles in the seemingly random coincidence of chance encounters. Those are the crowns of the letters of the words of our Torah scrolls. Thank you.